So, what gets in the way of people achieving their goals? I've heard this question come up uh, a lot of different times uh, in my travels in the world. And it seems like in the world today we have more knowledge and information about everything, and it's quite true, than we've ever had uh, in the history of the planet. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much information we can get out of a little small device you carry in your pocket. Uh, you know, you have your phone, and the whole world's knowledge, it seems, uh, whether for the good or for the bad, is, is on that device. And so it would seem that if knowledge was the thing that helped us to achieve our goals, then the world should be achieving its goals immensely, uh, more easily than it does today. And yet, most of the people I talk to are struggling with this. They're, they're, they're struggling with, um, in many cases, information overload. Uh, there's almost, it seems like there's too much information to sort through. And you sit there and you say, well, okay, I have all this information available to me. Why can't, with all of this extra knowledge from other people, from my own experience, why can't I seem to further myself and get ahead? And the answer almost inevitably comes back to that one thing um, that really is the core of, of success for all people, and that is commitment. And commitment is, it's kind of a special tree that we'd say hermetically, because the fruits of commitment are very important to us in life. Uh, if you want to achieve anything, you're going to have to be committed to do it. Now, we need to explore that a little bit, because the things that come natural to us, we never really need to commit to. They don't require commitment. If, if it's a natural process, you don't, for example, commit to breathing or, or you know, uh, batting your eyes and looking around at different things. You don't commit to walking. You just do those things. Those are a natural state. Um, when we want to do something that is unnatural, that is to our benefit, we have to commit to it. And that commitment is, the fruits that we get from, from making that commitment happen are incredible. They are the things that allow us to achieve our goals and to transform in life. So how do we plant that tree of commitment? It's, it's two things. It requires discipline and consistency. So you're going to start off and you might say, well, I don't really know how to become better at a certain thing. But you first have to commit to wanting to become better, to wanting to achieve, to wanting to obtain that thing. And in doing that, that's the first thing you're going to do is make the commitment. From the commitment, you're going to have to find a way of disciplining yourself uh, towards that commitment. And in doing that, you're going to have to be consistent in applying that discipline. So let's use a really simple example that everyone could understand. Let's say a person wanted to let go of some weight, get in better shape, uh, one of the things they're going to have to do is they're going to have to get disciplined in a way that they haven't been, which is why they're not achieving the goal in the first place. If it came natural to you, it wouldn't be much of an achievement. It would just sort of happen because it's a natural state for you. When someone's trying to achieve a goal, it generally means they're trying to achieve a state that is an unnatural state. But unnatural does not mean, it, it, you know, something that is not of nature doesn't mean that it's necessarily negative. In fact, in most cases it isn't. It's preferable to the natural state. We, we would prefer to be unnatural beings because the, the natural state in this universe is entropy. It's tearing apart. It's falling down. It is stagnation. It is non-progression, non-growth. So the unnatural state for us is generally the better state. And when we want to create an unnatural state, we need to hone our tree of commitment, backed up with our discipline and consistency. That grows something within us if we do it long enough, and that becomes our second nature. And our second nature, you, you hear people say, oh, that's, our, that's that person's second, it's their second nature to be that way. That's a nature that we consciously choose to develop and to make it a part of us, so much so that it is in time, if we stick with it, it becomes very much as powerful as our first nature. So for example, again, if we were looking at someone who wanted to let go of that weight, they would get in maybe, for example, they'd have to change what they eat. They'd have to change their physical activity level. Uh, and we could achieve that many different ways. But they'd have to start doing things in a different way. They'd have to start um, committing to do something differently. And if you don't put the consistency there, you will fail. You need consistency. 
So, you know, on, on every day, every other day, whatever it might be, I consistently do something to achieve that second nature. And consistency is the thing that will really show out. See, the tree of commitment is kind of interesting because that tree of commitment is only as strong as the consistency and the discipline given to it. So if someone says, no, I'm, I, I, I really want this to happen, but I only work on it once in a while, then you're going to get the results of only working on something once in a while, which pretty much results in, in nothing. Uh, for example, if you said, again, I wanted to let go of some weight, we'd say, okay, you're going to let go of some weight. So you're going to have to, obviously, you have weight on you that comes from something you've been eating and from perhaps not doing enough physical activity. Okay, so those two things are going to have to change. Well, in changing those things, what are you going to be consistent with? If, for example, you decided that you don't eat very well, um, and you decide, okay, one day a week I'm going to eat well, you're not going to get any results. Two days a week, still no results. Three days a week, maybe something begins to happen. Four days a week, maybe you start getting better results. It's that consistency that you bring to the table. Uh, now, the discipline side of it, that's a special side. Discipline is doing something that you don't want to do, that you know is for the betterment of yourself, and doing it anyways. And it's usually doing it in a way that you, as though you loved doing it. So in other words, um, you want the results of being fitter and stronger and in better shape, but to get those results, you're going to have to be disciplined and, pi and find time in your schedule to make that happen in a way that is successful for you. So there are going to be days, for example, you might get up and you say, well, I don't want to go do my exercises today. I'm tired. Uh, I, I didn't sleep well last night. Well, discipline says, but if I want to achieve this, I have to take my commitment and use my discipline and do it anyways. And if I do that anyways, all the time, I get results from that. And then if I do it long enough, it becomes such a second nature that it becomes my natural state to be fitter, stronger, healthier, or wiser, and whatever else you're trying to achieve. Most people that aren't achieving their goals, they're missing the tree of commitment. And they're missing the discipline and the consistency that one must, must, be there for them. And if it comes natural to you, great. I mean, God bless you. Most, most things of higher achievement don't come natural to human beings. We, we don't just sort of obtain things by, by sitting still. We have to do something about obtaining those things. So for most higher understandings in life, having a higher mind, then you're going to require that tree of commitment in your life.